Thank you all for very willingly coming over to <laughs> <laughs> talk uh, about uh, our 50th birthday, which is uh, today. My name is uh, Seth Moses. I'm the branch manager of the Colburn Grove branch. Um, so, so welcome. Um, I'm also obligated to thank our sponsors for today, um, who are, uh, among others, uh, Children's Plus, Career Online High School by Gail, uh, and Casey Parent. Um, so, uh, now for a very, very brief history lesson about the library. Uh, mid County Public Library began as uh, a formal partnership between Clay and Jackson Counties uh, 50 years ago today, on November 10th, 1965. Um, a few years after that, uh, Platte County joined our system, uh, making us the three county consolidated library district that we are today. Um, since then, the, the library system has grown along with the uh, population in this area, which continues to grow uh, to this very day. Um, and so as we grow, so does uh, everything that the, the library offers. Um, in 1965, when we, the, the year of our birth, the <laughs> um, Continent Public Library circulated 1.4 million items. Um, including uh, a very innovative new service at that time, uh, 16 millimeter film. <laughs> uh, now, today, uh, this last year, we circulated more than 8.8 .8 million items. Um, and we're continually working to expand access to uh, not only reading material, but technology, um, and uh, as well as to innovation, information, ideas, and inspiration. Um, so from the old days of checking out film strips to uh, today, where you can download ebooks uh, fairly easy through our website, uh, Mekanda Public Library remains an integral part uh, of the community here, um, helping to create unparalleled avenues to access. Um, so that's us as a system. Um, our branch is a little bit younger than the system as a whole. Uh, the Colburn Road branch was built in 1992 um, as what we affectionately call in our library system a bonus branch, uh, which means basically when we were building libraries through uh, the late 80s and the early 90s, uh, we, along with one or two other branches, weren't part of that original plan. Um, luckily, um, we were prudent enough with funding at the time that we had enough left over uh, to build uh, a handful of additional locations in areas that we thought would see the most population growth. So uh, notably, this building we're all in right now, um, as well as our branch on the north side of Blue Springs. Um, since then, uh, Colburn has become the second busiest location out of all 35 mid-continent public library locations. Um, yes. <laughs> uh, the busiest location is just across town off of Oldham Road. So uh, together, combined, both of your Lee Summit libraries uh, just this last year, uh, from July of 2014 to June of this year, uh, we circulated over one million items. Ooh, just our two branches. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Great, right? um, we are a community of readers, after all. Right? Um, and this also makes Lee Summit a very, very special place to be a librarian and to do library work. Um, I know it means the world to me and our superb team here at the branch. Uh, to see this kind of support from the community. Um, all these visits, all this material circulated, it, it, we truly do feel we make a, a large difference here. Um, so with that in mind, and on behalf of the Mid-Continent Public Library System, the Colburn Road Branch, and our entire team, um, I want to thank you all and your fellow uh, Lee Summit teams. <laughs> Lee Summiters. Lee Summiters for, uh, we call? for support. Uh, both past, present, and uh, hopefully future. Um, now, uh, let's have a look at what we're sort of planning for the future. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is our new uh, comprehensive early literacy program. It's called Grow a Reader, much like this book is. Um, uh, and it's designed to guide parents and caregivers as they explore uh, early literacy skills with their children. Um, I hope you all take a copy with you, because we all have little ones in our lives in some way, shape, or form. Um, this book is written by a local author named Bridget Kios. Um, she uh, is 
previously been published before uh, and, and writes children's books, uh, most notably uh, Mustache Baby. If you haven't heard of that, it's, it's a cute book. Yeah. It's a baby with a mustache. It's very, very innovative. Uh, so, uh, your library system is committed to making sure that uh, children, all the way from birth uh, through grade school, uh, have programs, materials, whatever they need really, uh, to prepare them to read a grade level, uh, which is especially important by third grade. Um, our Grow Reader program will combine uh, traditional library programs, like our story time sessions, uh, something else, uh, technology, like uh, our new Grow a Reader app, uh, and new and ambitious uh, outreach efforts. Um, most notably, I'm happy to announce, um, our Reading Rocket, uh, which is a mobile library uh, on wheels. Uh, it's, a, it's a nice big RV looking thing that's going to be uh, uh, made over to look like a, a rocket. So you can see there's a theme. Yeah. <laughs> it's very good stuff. Um, so watch for, for more information about that later on this year. Um, we're going to keep growing and expanding it. Um, I, I look forward to hearing what you guys think about it at some point. Okay, so uh, next up. Um, Beyond Grow Reader, I, I kind of want to talk about um, some of our plans for the future of your local library building. Um, I encourage you all to check this out before you leave today. It's, it's sort of a really neat um, the sketch of what our branch could look like at some point in the future. Um, our Board of Trustees, uh, which governs our library system, each county has representatives on that board. Um, has completed a capital plan that uh, looks at things like population growth, uh, facility needs, and uh, service trends in the communities that we serve. Um, Colburn Road is tapped to become what we call a destination library. Uh, much like our, our Woodneath and North and Penns branches, if you've been to those, and much like our Midwest Genealogy Center. Uh, large, nice buildings with um, additional amenities and services, uh, such as meeting rooms, computer labs, uh, study rooms, uh, and plenty of space for collaboration and reading, um, not to mention expanded hours of operation. Um, so I hope you're all, after looking at this, as excited as we are about it. Um, and then finally, the last thing I want to do is uh, just show a video that we've sort of thrown together for, uh, for this 50th uh, anniversary bash. Um, the video celebrates the uh, most important thing a library can have, and that's you all, our, our uh, dedicated library lovers. So, here we go. Maybe. Are we on? Yep. Are we on? I'm nervous, though. There's no characters on this one. I fell in love at the library when I was five. I've been coming to the library since I was a little girl in elementary school. I, I, mean, I went to the library as a child and I've continued to go to the library, you know, as an adult. I always liked the summer reading programs when I was a little girl. <laughs> but I didn't really learn to read until I taught my daughter to read. And now it's about 20. And now I read everything. Ever since I was a little guy, I liked to come to the library because there was some big lady there, and I mean big, to me. I looked up at her and said, ma'am, can you show me the books on travel? Can you show me about my neighbors? I always had a question for them, so they dodged me every time I came in. There's nothing like just having a book you can have and just laugh your head off together reading stories. Sometimes I, I get books and take them home, start reading them and get about a third of the way through and think, I already read this book. <laughs> so, I love to learn and so there's no better place to come to learn about any things than the library. It makes a great date night for my husband and I. We both love it actually. I need something spiritual, I need something educational, I need something where I'm helping and I'm doing all these kinds of things in retirement. It's bright. Um, it's welcoming. It feels like an extension of your home. Uh, they have the teen programs and uh, 
they just have different things than just one thing every single time. I love the librarians. They are, they, they are awesome. They, when I need help, they're there for me. I like to look at the new books, and then if I once I've gotten through those, I'll just scan the shelves and I'll pick out anything that catches my eye. If you want to find out about your family history, you can find out in the libraries. If you're looking for a job upgrades or skill upgrades, all those things are in the library. For me, it's a kind of cornucopia of culture, and so it's a great thing. When we travel, we can download them onto our iPads and take the books with us and not have to carry the book. As a homeschool family, we check out numerous books and DVDs and other materials that correspond with our curriculum. Um, I think over the summer, he has read 26 books, which for being you know, an autistic child that just learned to talk a few years ago, that's pretty amazing. Um, we've got the magic shows, uh, Mr. Stinky Feet. Uh, they've had yoga classes. They've had Tai Chi for arthritis that has helped keep my um, oh, my older body mobile. <laughs> it's a real big adventure. Oh, I like Darby from the kid. And I have some of her. I really like that one. Captain America, Thor, Hulk, Star Wars, Sharks. My favorite book is The Frozen. Hoot and Chomp and The Scat and... I like the pictures too. <laughs> it's a long story. <laughs> I still love it. <laughs> it has wide open space, but it has a lot of people. I love, I love everything. It gives me free music on freak out. Pretty much all the um, librarians are nice most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> the people that work at the library. Maycott kind of has great buildings are welcoming, they, they redo all of the displays and make it really welcoming and inviting and inspiring. And they have great resources, but the thing that sets it apart is the people that work here. I wouldn't go anywhere else because they, they look up all my books for me. I really like uh, their helpfulness and their friendliness, so that's really makes me want to come back. They're more like friends than staff workers. For 16 years I've been coming four to five days a week. So I know the library staff were kind of like family. Um, everybody always greets us. And the baby story times are always really good. Yeah. I love that it's a nice welcoming place that I can come and do my homework and hang out with my friends. And I love that it is all things for all people. There's all ages that can come when you go. It used to always be, I always thought the kids, it was more for kids, but as you grow as an adult, you find it's not just for research, it's also for pleasure and enjoyment, and there's valuable resources now with technology advancing and people being able to come and use resources of the, the computers and things like that who don't have access to be able to do that, and taxes and everything else you can come and use, so it's got a lot of variety. It's a great resource, and it's great to have it in the community, and five minutes from my house. I love seeing the families come through because they're making that impact on their kids that the library is an important place to be. And it's not just about literacy. I think that's a sounding board for us, but it's so much more than that. It's about building relationships with one another that, with other people in your community. And I think that's what we see here too. It's not just a place to get books or videos. It's part of the social uh, socialization that goes with the community. To me, it's just, it's all part of it the human interaction. I can't imagine life without a library. <laughs>
My name is Danny O'Neill, and I am a library lover. I'm Dolores, and I, I am a library lover. I love coming here. <laughs> the library is the window to the world. I'm a library lover. My name is Alicia Moore, and I am a mid-continent library lover. <laughs> uh, I, I'm done. <laughs>